Okay, now let's touch upon a common pitfall, a common obstacle for beginning writers when they're working with paragraphing, and that is cliches and trite expressions. Now, what cliches and trite expressions are is that they're old, worn out ways of developing or attempting to show an idea. Now, cliches and trite expressions should never happen in college writing. Reason being is that you did not come up with that cliche. For example, a lot of people say that's just water under the bridge, right? The song about that that uses that. Now, did you come up with that expression, that's just water under the bridge? Mm -mm. Who did? We don't know. Why don't we know? Because what happened is that long, long time ago, someone came up with that turn of phrase. Believe it or not, yeah, it's true. Somebody invented that. Now, we don't know who that person was, but what happened soon after is that somebody heard that and said, ooh, that's good. Can I use that? And then that person said, well, yeah, you can use that. Feel free, take with it and run with it. And then next thing you know, it was killed became a cliche, became a trite expression. Deadly. Now, when we speak every day, when we meet people, we see family and friends, a lot of the little brief interchanges and conversations we have with one another contain cliches and trite expressions. And what cliches and trite expressions are is that they are tell sentences that mask show sentences. So anytime you find yourself using a cliche or a trite expression, what you have to do is take that cliche, trite expression, and take it out of your writing. And then the next thing that you have to do is you have to ask yourself, what does that cliche mean? Then what you have to do is you have to ask yourself what's an example, what's an illustration of that cliche. And then you have to use your own language to come up with that to form your own show sentence. So again, cliches and trite expressions, why are they bad? They're old, worn out, totally unoriginal. The readers heard them so many times before that when the reader hits them, they you lose all your energy that you've been building inside of that paragraph. So what do you have to do with cliches and trite expressions? You have to kick them out. Then what do you have to do? Ask yourself, what does that cliche mean? So that, that's, that's kind of tough, right? So let's take that cliche that we were working with, water under the bridge. What does water under the bridge mean? Well, hmm. Water under the bridge, water under the bridge. Well, what that means is that when, as we go through life, we encounter certain events. Some are more dramatic in nature than others, what people call drama, right? And that when you have taken care of and resolved that dramatic situation, that dramatic event with someone, you don't want to go back and revisit that dramatic event and then open it all over again and then relive it because that's water under the bridge. In other words, we've already accomplished that, right? So, what's an example of that? Hmm. Well, when one of my daughters, Rebecca, was 16 and one of the first times that she was allowed to drive by herself she went out for yogurt with some friends. And then when she came home, she was crying. And of course, like every parent, we all, my wife and I knew what had happened. So she leads us to the car and what had she done? Exactly right, she'd gotten into a little fender bender. Now, we had our little talk about car safety and being very careful in parking lots because parking lots are the worst place to drive because people are parking and not worrying about driving. And then, guess what? It was water under the bridge. How many times have 
my wife and I brought that situation back up with my daughter Rebecca and reintroduced it as like, you better not. How, guess how many times? Zero. Why? Because it's water under the bridge. We had already resolved that issue, resolved that conflict, and to go back and revisit it, it would serve no purpose. So what did, what did I just provide there? That was an example of what to do. So what did I do with that cliche? Right? And then what did I substitute in its place? An example, right, with nice development therein. What was my daughter's name? Where was she going? What was she going to do? What happened, right? So therein, that cliche, right, once we take that cliche and we pull it apart, what do we find? So that's what you have to do anytime you find yourself falling into the common pitfall of using a cliche or a trite expression.